So Tom and Gary for mine exploration. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the channel or please consider subscribing. Um, just uh, shows us that you enjoy the content that we keep putting up on YouTube. So we've come out today. I don't know how this day is going to go. I don't know whether we're going to get underground or not really. Uh, we'll just have to see. Um, now I've been with the dog past this mine. Um, but I've never actually been in it. Uh, obviously with having the dog and stuff. Uh, you know, it wasn't uh, the best idea to go in, I don't suppose, but you can see what a beautiful valley we're in. I don't know if you can see behind us there, if I just pan around a little bit. Lovely deep crevice into the ground. It's quite an interesting place, is this? So the path that we're walking on now is, is the old mine, um, the mine path going down to the mine. Um, and it just sort of snakes its way around the outside of the valley as we get deeper and deeper going down towards the river. So. Uh, it's quite a nice pleasant walk, especially on a day like this. I know we've got our jackets on and stuff, but it's getting on for probably about what, 20 degrees or something, isn't it? Yeah. So, lovely sunny day, and it makes a change here in the UK um, to get a bit of sun. Because up until now, it's done out but pour down with rain. Dark, depression, things that us British like. Right, so I'll swing the camera around, you can see where we're, where we're walking. Um, there's a few, bits and pieces to see, uh, old buildings and things like that. I mean the long derelict, you know, so um, it's more like the foundations and stuff I suppose, but still quite um, quite an interesting place really. So if we're just standing on the top looking down, you can see there's the start of the buildings just there in the middle of the, in the, middle of the frame. And there's also like a winch wheel down there. We're gonna go down now and go and have a quick look at it. It's so bright and sunny, it's actually difficult to Expose the camera properly without putting a, an ND filter on. Just being careful as we walk down here because it is quite steep. So the winch wheel. So if we're looking over here. So you can see straight away, there's a big heavy timber. Just here, look, going along. On the end of which is this mechanism. So you can see there's like a handle on the top. And on there, it's got a pivot with a hole in. Obviously to pull like some sort of lever of some sort, some sort of system of pulleys or something. And then here's the winch wheel. You can see all the spokes and everything like that. Uh, got the other end of it, and you'll see a corresponding hook, which is just here. So I'm presuming that would have grabbed hold of a rope, and it was used to wind drums or something. Or perhaps this is a quarry. I don't know. And we can see also the bearing block. And got the hole bored in the rock there. You can see how rusty it is. So that would have probably held the other end of the spindle. Now I think this here is possibly the mine entrance. Completely blocked up. There is another entrance that we're going to go into, but this does look interesting as well. Yeah, now that does look like an entrance to me. It does seem to go on. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mason. Put this on. Yeah, so you can see it is well collapsed, but I'm pretty sure that was the mine there. <laughs> so just on the top here, we've got this, this metal framework. Um, it looks like it's had two bushes at either side of it. Can you see where them two rings are? Just like there and there. It looks like the bush has long since rotted out. Maybe it's a wooden bush or something. For that to pivot on. Um, it's also in two halves with a bolt in the middle so it can move. Now if we pan round, you can see just over there. I think that might have been the winch house. We're we'll going to have a look at it now. There's not much of it left, but uh, I presume the way it's positioned, that'll have been the uh, where the winch was situated. So just outside the mine is this little hut, or what's left of this little hut. There seems to be a lot of big flat rocks. Maybe it was part of the roof or something. You can see it's completely and utterly collapsed around the rear. 
and if we pan down towards the, the back there's a lot of fallen stone suggesting this was actually quarry because if you look at the size of the stone it's all very big slabs almost like roofing slate obviously it's not slate though and there we can just see a nice view of the valley that we're in and how steep the sides are as well it's, it's almost like a gorge Wow, that sun's bright, really bright. So we're walking down sort of like a cut, a cut in I suppose. See the stone wall behind me there. And it, it makes its way down to a series of smaller buildings. I think there's about three or something down here. And some really rather interesting uh, structures, which I'll show you in just a moment. It's quite a drop off to the left hand side, going down the river, or down the back. So we're sort of going along the ridge if you like. Now in front of us is a strange, maybe two or maybe three, um, compartment structure. I'll spin the camera around so you can see in a sec, but there's some steel work just over towards this side here which I'll show you. Um, and also it seems to have been split into quite small little chambers. Um, We've got holes in the wall as well, like little cubby holes. What an unusually shaped little building. If we walk into it, you can see how small it is. It's really just a little, little cubby hole with a very narrow entrance. On this side, it looks like it was the same. Stupid that it sounds. This wasn't stables, was it? It just seems like it's awful narrow for the pony you know because if we look it does seem to have like another wall there which is, is collapsed obviously you've got your outer walls there and the one remaining one here I wonder if that's what this was a little stable block if you get your pony in there it'd have to do a three-point turn to get back out wouldn't it <laughs> further on we've got this depression here again you can see the stone walls to either side We'll go around the back of that in a minute, where it's a lot more, in, a lot more interesting. But we'll work our way over to this second building, which is strange in itself because it's circular. So if we look in here, it's got plenty of cubby holes in the wall. If you look here, see there and there. What were they used for? Like panning around, it's a bit dark I know because the settings are a bit funny with it being so bright. You see there's another cubby hole there, down low. It's a nice sheltered location though. And also there, potentially, was that a fireplace? Is it have signs of burning? I don't know. But it seems like a purposeful little triangular tapering hole, a bit like a fireplace. So you can see to the other side of that, um, that wall that we were looking at are these very heavy buttresses. I say heavy buttresses, but I think they've actually toppled over. So I think originally they were possibly like pillars or something that have fallen and now leaned against the wall. Can't say for sure if that's what they were, but I don't know actually. I almost want to say there were pillars holding the leet because I think the leet is just up there. Now there is a hole in the wall somewhere. Yeah, I'll show you the hole in the wall where the leet was. And it, it does more or less align with this. So this is the hole where the leet ran through. The reason I know that is because if we look over the wall, you can see, I'll take the camera right up. There's the leet there. And if we pan around, pretty much it goes right over the top of all of that stuff there so the leaf's actually going downhill at this point so it's running past us makes you wonder if there is a water wheel or something or a wheel pit a bit further down the valley right so that was interesting we've just had a um, i didn't like to put them on video but um the farmer who has the land here just came to, to speak to us 
uh, just really to see that we weren't doing anything with the sheep or anything like that. And he was saying it was, all this was a, a, a quarry, if you like. And the leet that we've just been looking at, um, that was actually to supply the smelt mill, which is quite a lot further down the valley, uh, which of course is where a lot of the, there's a lot of mines a lot further up this valley, and that was where all the, the ore was taken to, to be smelted. Um, so what he's saying was that uh, all this appears a bit strange because um, they found that there was too much topsoil when they were quarrying, so they had to then start uh, quarrying underground. So it was an underground quarry. Um, a lot of the mine is now sort of filled with water, uh, which he was just telling us there where the where the uh, shaft is, if you want to call it a shaft. I think it's more like a big sort of adit going in, um, which is a bit further up the hill. Um, but it does seem uh, that this was was a slate quarry, so a lot of the slate here is used on the, the local housing and things. Um, so that was quite nice, quite uh, quite a nice little talk with him there. Uh, he's certainly very knowledgeable about what uh, what the, the land was used for back then. Uh, he's given us full permission to keep walking, by the way. So before everyone's up in arms, um, we are on public access land and the farmer is quite happy for us too. Because we asked him if we can climb over the wall and just go and have a look further down the valley and he says yeah. So we'll go and have a look at the, uh, there's another series of buildings down there so we'll go down there and have a quick look at that before we go as well. Stumped to death. Oh, Mr. Mason. This is going to be tight getting through here. Something is wobbling, making a noise. Right, so as the farmer said, most of the quarry is underground. So we found a little um, crevice in the, in the rock. We just sneak through there. Um, We'll have a quick look around here and just see see what there is to see. It's quite small. Uh, we're in a bit of a chamber here. Very big slabs above our heads. It does narrow quite a lot, so I think I might have to take my bag off to be able to get through. Uh, let's have a quick look, eh? I'm pretty sure, Gary, that this has collapsed more since because see how we've got a line of green mm. actually it does it does go there on there yeah so let's watch you it's footing it you're gonna see this Get your foot jammed in anything. And also we've got a tremendous rock above me head here. So I'll get all this on the video, I'll start the video on this properly. So what I'm looking at look is we've got a passage going through there on the right. I'm gonna try and give you a bit more focus, there we go. I'm a bit concerned about this rock that's above me head, so I'm just gonna move on a little bit from that. And you can tell this is definitely man-made because if you look here, how they've been propping the roof up, there's pillars, timbers and things. I'll try to keep this up. So it goes off that way. And it also goes off this way. Blooming heck, man. Don't want to be touching that. I have a little room to miss about this place. Let's just set my bag off. Yes, yeah, so I've had to set my bag off because we're all going to get rather tight here. Oh, Gary! There's an owl! Oh, we can't go through there then. So it looks like we're going to have to bought this mission because I don't know if you can see on the camera just there 
is a sleeping owl. So I don't want to go in there and disturb it. You'll have to take me word for it, I don't think I've caught that very well on the camera, but there is an owl back there. Um, so I don't want to go in there and upset it, so instead we're going to go through this one on the, the right. Ah, oh, blooming heck Mr Mason, the places we get into. Can we get through there do you think? So, if you look at what we're looking at, I don't particularly like it to be honest with you. Look at the way that is leaning. A pillar. And it does go on over there. I don't really like what I'm seeing here. Yeah? I don't really want to touch anything. I can't really tell if it goes on. So hopefully you can see this, hopefully it's all in focus. It's all very tight. You can see uh, how they've been taking the stone out from here and supporting it with these pillars. But I ain't walking past that pillar. Look at the way it's leaning, this massive great slab up on the top of it. I don't mind getting into tight situations, but that's getting a bit too... It's not so much of the tightness. Let's back out. Yeah, I don't mind getting in tight situations, but that's getting a bit too uh, too dodgy because that pillar's really leaning and seems to be an awful lot of weight on it. I don't fancy getting crushed if, uh, if you accidentally knock it or anything. Well, that's a shame. It sounds nice to get a bit of a distance underground, but safety first. I hope that owl's all right as well. Right, does this focus? Does it? It's an autofocus. It's a big old spiders, isn't it? Yeah, it's Yeah, cave spiders. There's a dead bird, right in the entrance. So that was a shame. Shame we couldn't go in any further, but there's something in your head telling you it's too dangerous and it's too dangerous. So the farmer did say um, he's quite happy for us to climb across the wall. Although he did say, you knock it down, you rebuild it. So that's what we'll have to do. But we'll not knock it down. Where did Mr. Mason get across? Where did you get across? There's no way in there. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, we're now the other side of the wall. As you can see, this is the leet. Now, the farmer said the, uh, the leet predates the mine. Predates the quarry, sorry. Um, he said the quarry, you can see as you go down the valley that they've done things around the leaf all the way down rather than going straight through it. You can see there clearly as it goes through the wall as it works its way down the valley. It appears to be going uphill but 
it must be downhill. <laughs> it must just be optical illusion. Little tunnel there for the water to go through. That's like how the buildings look like mine entrances. And because I've gone through a bit of a deeper sort of cut, you see here the lead's taking a bit of a sharp turn around the corner. You don't know why they didn't harvest the water from here as well, just to add to it. But it seems to have bypassed it. You can see here, look, in the ground, there will be shadows in the way. There you go. We're pretty much walking along the coping stones of the of the leaf. It snakes its way around. Too hot. I'm dressed in rubber. So I found is every time I don't dress in rubber, we end up going underground and get absolutely soaking wet. So today I thought, yeah, I know it's absolutely boiling up. I know the sun's shining, but I'm still going to dress in rubber just in case. I don't feel quite so smug now though. Absolutely sweating my taties off. But I'm regretting this rubber suit now. It's boiling. Mr. Mason. Are you regretting wearing your your waders? I'm very much regretting. Sweat. Yeah, didn't expect it to be quite this warm. So come down to this uh, this little hut down at the bottom if you like. Um, have a quick look around it. It's just your basic sort of one up, one down. Oop! Get it all in the floor there. Just have a quick look in. So the interesting thing is, I'll probably have to mess on with the exposure here, so there we go. It's got the same holes in the wall. Oop. Let's turn this around, Gary, the mic. Yeah, so the interesting thing is, it's still it's showing the same holes in the wall that we saw earlier on in the other buildings. Um, actually, my house at uh, where I used to live. I'm not supposed to give any names away now, am I? From somebody trolling me channel. But um, yeah, where I used to live, uh, we had the same sort of nooks in the wall and stuff, which is just sort of pretty local to, to where we are now. Nice little fireplace there, look. So I wonder why they put them so low down though, because that's right down near the ground. There's obviously some sort of like bench here next to the Next to the fire, with the curved top, it's gone. And if we look up to the roof, oh wow, a great big nest. It's going to be like an owl's nest, isn't it? And they have actually lined the roof with plastic polythene, look. So this must have been reused at some point later on. And we've got a pulley hung up there, which I presume was for like, um, you know, hanging your clothes up and all this sort of thing. They'd been like a, what do they call them, kitchen maid or whatever they were called. You can see where there was something else, some more details up on the upper floor, up there. Quite a bit higher than the floor itself. There's something on the wall there, I can't quite make out what it is. But. There's an awful lot of... There's nothing on that nest, is there? No. Awful lot of sticks there from... Would you say that was an owl? So as Gary pointed out there, this is on the outside of the building obviously, and you can see the old roof line there. Try to see whether it's a change of stone, or whether it was like another outbuilding, like a barn or something attached to it. But if you also look, it looks like it was done twice. Because, see where that black stone is there? There, there's another roof line there, look, going down. Then one above it, then one above that. How strange. 
and there is actually a change of stone there isn't it Gary it's sort of like a lot lighter up like this top part here I don't know how well the camera's picking it up but there is like a definite line there and of course we've got this wall here so this could have been the other gable end wall but there's not enough stone dotted around to suggest that was actually part of the building if it's collapsed or anything it's all in all quite nice so of course all this lot was owned by Eggleston Estates originally um, both the quarry and the mill. I think the mill was owned by Eggleston Estates. One day we'll have to go and have a walk down there and just see see where it is down there. I know um, the farm was saying there is still foundations to be seen but the mill itself is now gone so um, it might be worth a walk down just have a look. We'll maybe do that in another video or something but uh, I think that pretty much wraps up this, this uh, well call it a quarry now now that we've discovered it is actually a quarry not a mine. Um, so we wrap this video up, so uh, thanks for watching everybody. So Tom and Gary for mine exploration, thanks for watching, give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you absolutely detested it, and uh, please, if you don't subscribe already, please consider subscribing. Like I always say, uh, we don't have adverts or anything in the channel, or we haven't selected the option to, we don't make any money from it or anything like that, we're just out to have a bit of, a uh, bit of safe hobbying fun, if you like, um, doing what we've done for the last, 20 odd years or more so uh, thanks for watching and see you all again next time